My husband, John Tanner, was a kind and generous man. He was also a self-made wealthy man. But all his money could not save him. Seven revered physicians examined his diseased leg, and each brought unwelcome news. John? This canker will soon overtake you. The leg cannot be saved. The leg must be amputated or you will die. I am grateful for your efforts on my behalf, Dr. Black. But the leg and I came into this world together, and together we shall depart it. John, to be obstinate Thank you, doctor. at this. But the leg and I will now be leaving. John, keep it dry, please. John also left that office with two intentions to set his business affairs in order, and with what time he had left, to do all the good he could. The opportunity came through a notice. Being a Baptist lay minister and wanting to protect his brethren, John prepared to expose those Mormon elders as the imposters they surely were. I know that God has once again sent heavenly messengers to the earth and that he has called a prophet, Joseph Smith, to reveal the words of the ancient prophets. John, I've had enough of this golden Bible drivel. Care to join Catherine and me for coffee? Most kind of you, Barton, but I'd like to hear them out. A Book of Mormon prophet said, and now, my beloved brethren, I would that ye should come unto Christ, who is the Holy One of Israel. But as elders Simeon and Jared Carter taught that night, a powerful feeling came into his heart, unlike anything he had ever experienced. Pardon me, would you have a copy of that book that I might review? Yes, of course. Would you care to meet with us afterwards? Over the next several days, he pored over it, comparing it side by side with the Bible. Yes, I believe everything. For John and me, everything those Mormon elders taught resonated with an undeniable spirit. Then will you accept the Savior's invitation to be baptized? I know baptism is essential, but I cannot. It is my, my leg, my lameness. I, I cannot endure baptism. And I am about to depart this life. John Tanner, do you believe that Jesus Christ healed a crippled man at the water of Bethesda? Well, yes, with all the certainty of my soul. And did not his disciples, Peter and John, heal a man, lame from birth, at the gates of the temple? If that priesthood power was part of the primitive church, would it not follow that it would be bound in the restored church? Yes. Do you have faith sufficient to be healed? I do. Yes, I do. Then John Tanner, in the name of Jesus Christ, and by the authority of his priesthood, I command you to rise up and walk.
You need not fear. The Lord can do all things. John insisted on baptism that very night. And though he had not put weight on his leg for six months, he walked the quarter mile to Lake George. He then walked home, continually giving thanks to God. I love you, boys. Bye, From the moment of his conversion, John gave his all. He supplied and equipped two of our sons, Nathan and John Joshua, plus another 50 men to go to Zion's camp. And a few months later, paid to furnish seven families headed to Kirtland and Missouri. John, Elizabeth, this is not a commandment, but it is a word of wisdom. But John Tanner's story is not only about what he gave, but also about what he gave up. The day the word of wisdom was made known to him, he quit the use of alcohol, tobacco, coffee and tea, and never used them again. Barton, it is so good to have you in our home. Well, it was nice of John to have me over for coffee. Now all you need is a friend who's sworn off cream and sugar. As we prepared to join the saints, John sold our hotel, several homes, two large farms, orchards, a dairy, a sawmill, an island, and more than 2,200 acres of timberland. In early December of the following year, the church was in serious financial trouble. Mortgage payments on the temple land were past due. Resources were exhausted. Foreclosure was imminent. We have two, perhaps three weeks at best then they will reclaim it. Tear down the walls and plow them under. I'm not sure what else we can do. Thank you, Brother Rickton. But I believe there is something we can do. That a miracle might be performed, that thy holy purposes may come to pass. We petition for thy mercy and help in sending us one with the means to pay the mortgage and save the temple. Are you ill? I dreamed we were needed in Kirtland. When shall we leave? Immediately. Now, for our journey to Kirtland, we'll need 55. Hold on a minute, John. Did you say Kirtland as in Ohio? As we prepared to leave, most of the town believed John had gone mad. Kirtland is hundreds of miles, John. It's the middle of December. Appreciate your concern, Barton, but no man having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. Despite every effort by friends to dissuade him, on Christmas Day, 1834, we loaded up our family and a few others, all our earthly possessions, and departed. 
25 days and 500 miles later, our tired and winter-wearied family finally arrived in Kirtland, knowing we needed to be there, but not really knowing why. But the rigors of our journey seemed to melt away as we were finally able to meet the prophet. And I am John Tanner. Brother Tanner, I know of your good heart. I believe a better name for you is Father Tanner. Had we arrived in Kirtland just one day later, the temple land would have been foreclosed on. But John paid off the $2,000 owed, taking a note from Joseph in exchange. He then gladly loaned the temple committee $13,000 and signed another note for $30,000, all this while making liberal donations to the temple fund. John would never say it, but I will. Because of John Tanner, the temple was saved. When the temple was completed, we were blessed to participate in its dedication. Miracles occurred not just inside that hallowed building, but outside as well. During a later session, our son Myron beckoned me to come and see angels standing on the temple roof. It was a heavenly manifestation never to be forgotten. But John's giving didn't stop there. He invested hard cash in an attempt to shore up the troubled church-sponsored bank. Despite his sacrifice, the Kirtland Safety Society closed its doors in November 1837. And with it went the last of John's fortune. Unfazed, he was determined to follow the prophet, and we embarked on the 1,000-mile journey to Missouri with nine of our children. I paid my obligations and was then left with one old broken-down horse, an old wagon, and seven dollars and fifty cents. Please, sir, a bit of buttermilk for my family and some bread if you can spare any. We're very hungry. Good day, son. And what is your name? Joseph. Joseph Smith Tanner. No, sir. I beg of you. Did I do a bad thing? No. You said your name just perfectly. In only three years, we had gone from vast wealth to begging for our bread. Then, our precious daughter, Philomelia, succumbed to sickness and hardship and died on the trail. Moving with the saints again, we settled in Montrose, just across the river from Nauvoo, and worked hard to rebuild and to pay off other church debt still owed from the Kirtland period. My brothers and sisters, the following brethren have been called to serve missions. Parley P. Pratt, Brigham Young, John Tanner, Wilford Woodruff. Then, at the April Conference of 1844, he was called on a mission to the eastern states. With his typical unwavering faith, he immediately prepared to leave. Lyman White. Brother Joseph. Father Tanner. 
I leave today for my mission. But before I go, there is a matter I would like to settle with you. It is the loan on the Kirtland Temple land. The Lord raised you up, Father Tanner, that you could build his kingdom through your sacrifices at this crucial time. I am eternally grateful that you were worthy and responded to his call. I am in your debt. What shall I do with this note? Brother Joseph, the only debt is one of gratitude, and that is mine. God bless you, Father Tanner. Your children shall never again beg for bread. It is estimated that in all, John gave over $50,000 to the church. He had found the pearl of great price and did not bother about the cost. John Tanner not only understood the law of consecration, he lived it. Father Tanner! 